So starting with our producers, producers are autotrophs. Um, auto means self, so they're producing their own energy. They're taking sunlight, which is light energy, and converting it into chemical energy or glucose. Our main producers are the photosynthetic plants and algae, um, and they take that um, sunlight as the source of energy and synthesize glucose. The other inputs to that are carbon dioxide and water. The glucose that is produced is an energy source both for the plant itself, um, it takes nutrients from the soil, uses the glucose, and that's how a plant builds its biomass. And that's one of the reasons that we use biomass as a measurement for the primary productivity of an ecosystem. So it's the biomass that provides the energy that's available for the non-photosynthesizing organisms or the rest of the food chain. They're going to consume the biomass of the plant and that's the energy that they can use and pass forward to the next trophic level. So consumers um, are at our next trophic level and the heterotrophs feed on the autotrophs in order to, to obtain their energy. They must get their energy from another source. They don't produce it themselves as the autotrophs do. So those are our herbivores and our carnivores. Our carnivores are going to get their energy from consuming the herbivore. So they're going to get the food for energy and also the nutrients that they need um, from the biomass that they're ingesting, the biomass from the plants. So in order to build a protein or new proteins in their body, they have to consume those proteins. Their body's not going to create it on their own. All right, and then our other types of organisms are our decomposers. They're going to get their energy from dead organisms, whether they're autotrophs or heterotrophs. And so they break down that dead organic matter. And through respiration, that energy is returned to the atmosphere, and then the nutrients are added back to the soil. So the decomposers play a very important role in cycling our nutrients. Um, we divide decomposers into two different groups. We have our detritivores, which eat non-living organic matter. That's like earthworms moving through the soil, um, other types of invertebrates. And then we have our saprotrophs. They live either on or in organic matter. Um, they secrete digestive enzymes and they absorb um, what they get from digestion. So those are our fungi and bacteria. All right, so life on Earth is sustained by solar energy. That's what drives photosynthesis. Um, we are a closed system, so we have a one-way flow of energy. We cycle our matter and nutrients. Energy cannot be cycled. Remember from our um, first and second laws of thermodynamics that energy is, um, once it's used, it's degraded to a lower form, which is usually going to be heat. Gravity is what drives um, our biogeochemical cycles, the cycling of matter and nutrients. All right, so when we look at our different processes, it's important that we know what the inputs are, what the outputs are, what process takes place in the middle, and then any transfers and transformations. So these are all terms that we use when we talked about systems. So let's look at this in terms of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, our inputs are sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. The processes that occur are chlorophyll in the plants are going to trap that sunlight. The energy splits the water molecules and that hydrogen from the water molecule is um, combined with the carbon dioxide and that's what gives us the glucose. So our outputs glucose which is the energy source used by the plant and also those in later trophic levels and then the oxygen that was left over from the water molecules and the carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. So the transformations that took place, the carbon dioxide and the water have been converted into a new substance. The transfer, the light energy, um, turns into chemical energy. So energy are always transfers, they're not transformations. Okay, respiration, which we can look at as um, the reverse of photosynthesis. Your inputs are your glucose and your oxygen and what happens you get oxidation in the cells um, and that releases the energy that's stored in the glucose for work and for heat. So then the outputs are carbon dioxide because you've got the carbon from the glucose that's combined with the oxygen and then you also get water from the hydrogen in the glucose combined with the oxygen. 
then you're also going to have your waste energy or your heat. The transformation, the glucose is turned into energy because the glucose is stored in the or the energy is stored in the carbon carbon bonds of the glucose and now that it's been uh, broken apart that energy is released and is used by the consumer. Glucose and oxygen have been converted into carbon dioxide, energy, and water. So the transfers that take place, once again, energy is our transfer. The chemical energy that was stored in the glucose has been um, transformed into kinetic energy, which is energy of motion, so that's the energy that's used for work, and then what has been degraded into heat. So when we look at how energy flows through an ecosystem, only a very small part of that sunlight that reaches the surface is transformed into glucose and passed along in those food chains. Um, so some of that solar energy does become stored um, within the plants itself. That's what creates its biomass. Some it maintains the life processes of the plant. The rest is dissipated as heat during respiration. So the energy that was stored in the biomass is passed on to the consumers. Um, the consumers are consumed and it goes on through the food chain or the decomposers um, are going to break down once the uh, living thing dies and turns into detritus. So this is kind of an overview um, of the incoming solar radiation. Uh, some of it's reflected or absorbed by the clouds and the radiation. Some of it's absorbed by the surface. Some of it's reflected by the surface. So we're just looking at the solar radiation that is absorbed. Uh, when the Earth's surface heats up, um, some of it is re-radiated as infrared heat, which is a longer wavelength that can be trapped by the greenhouse gases and stays close to Earth's surface, which is why the Earth's temperature remains warm. So matter can be recycled. Energy we know can um, only be degraded. So when we look at this diagram here, when energy flows through an ecosystem, we lose it as heat at each step along the way, whereas matter is going to continue to circulate. So we get energy from the sun, travels through the food webs, and through respiration, we're constantly losing that energy as heat. As far as matter goes, the nutrients are recycled. Um, as things decompose, our decomposers add it back to the soil. The plants are going to absorb the nutrients once again, um, and they enter that living cycle. We call these biogeochemical cycles, and we're going to go into more detail about the different types of cycles. We'll look at carbon, oxygen, sulfur, phosphorus, nitrogen. So what a biogeochemical cycle is, if you break down the word, bio means life, um, geo is earth, and chemical. So these are how um, different matter and nutrients cycle through living things and the earth. So it goes through the atmosphere, the lithosphere, the hydrosphere. So those are our four major reservoirs. Remember the atmosphere are the gases, hydrosphere is the water, lithosphere is the solid earth, and biosphere is all living things. All but one of our cycles are going to go through all four of the spheres. So there are three types of biogeochemical cycles. The first is the hydrologic or water cycle. Uh, water moves through all of the spheres. Most of it is going to be found in the hydrosphere. We have atmospheric cycles uh, where the largest portion of that given element exists in the gas form. So nitrogen and carbon are going to be our atmospheric cycles. They're also found in the other spheres, but once again it's the majority are found in the atmosphere. The third type is uh, sedimentary cycles. Most are found in the lithosphere. These are our slowest. Uh, phosphorus and sulfur fit this category. Now phosphorus is the only one of our cycles that does not enter the atmosphere. Sulfur does, um, but most of these are found in the lithosphere. And we will go into more detail in class on each of these cycles.